Good evening. Coming up tonight, four months after a march petitioning for his removal from campus, Professor David Boros is still making campus headlines. Do you have a TV? Do you have a remote to said TV? Does said TV have ESPN, ESPN2, and the SEC Network? Then you're ready for Gamecock Women's Basketball. And finally, the four words every college student wants to hear, free Tokyo Joe concert. We'll tell you where. All of that and more tonight on SGTV Nightly News. Live from the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio, this is SGTV Nightly News. Good evening, Carolina. I'm Finn Carlin. And I'm Will Kronsberg. Thanks for joining us tonight. The search for Brian Laundrie, a person of interest in connection to the death of Gabby Petito, continues. Officials in North Carolina are currently on the lookout for Laundrie as North Carolina law enforcement was tipped that he may be hiding in the state. The Watauga County Sheriff's Office have reported that Laundrie could be along the Appalachian Trail near Boone in Watauga County. According to University of South Carolina course listings for the spring 2022 semester, school visual art and design professor David Voros will return to the classroom in January. Voros has remained on paid sabbatical for the last two semesters after lawsuits and formal complaints have been filed alleging him of sexual assault and assault of students. Voros was also one of the main subjects of the Fire All Abusers March that we reported on in April. For the spring semester, Voros is scheduled to teach Arts 210, 710, and 810. And last night, the U.S. District Court of the state of South Carolina issued a temporary restraining order that prohibits state and local districts from stopping mask mandates. Governor Henry McMaster responded to the decision, arguing that parents should have the final say as to whether or not their children have to wear masks. McMaster went on to report that he has already filed a notice of appeal and is willing to take the case to the Supreme Court. This weekend across South Carolina, women's marches in support of women's rights will take place. Marches in Greenville, Columbia, Charleston, and Myrtle Beach will take place this Saturday, October 2nd. The marches are part of a statewide or nationwide movement to voice concerns about the recent passage of bills regarding abortion rights. The march in Columbia will be at Five Points Fountain at noon and at the end and end at the Martin Luther King Park. Both men and women are encouraged to attend. Finn, I think this is a great cause and a great time to get out and kind of see people fighting for rights in our city. Yeah, absolutely. It's not stopping anytime soon. I've gotten word that there's going to be a Planned Parenthood march this Friday over at the State House. So if you're involved in Planned Parenthood and support what they do, then that's the place for you to be on Friday morning. And coming up, exciting news for the women's basketball team. Kendall Smith will give you updates on all things sports, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. The Gamecock women's basketball team is ready to shoot their shot on a national level. Let's check in with our sports anchor, Kendall Smith, to give us the details. Kendall? Thanks so much, Finn. Earlier today, it was announced that the South Carolina women's basketball team will have 21 of their 29 games aired on national television. Their home opener will be played against Clemson on November 17th, and the game will air on the SEC Network. The Gamecocks will have a minimum of four games broadcast on ESPN and eight games on ESPN2. South Carolina went 26-5 and five last season and made a trip to the Final Four. This season, the Gamecocks return every player from last season's team, plus they welcome the number one recruiting class in the country. Forget about the United States victory in the Ryder Cup this weekend, although it was pretty darn great, I must say. But we've got to switch the subject to South Carolina golf because they are on fire. The men's team won their first tournament of the season this past weekend at the JT Poston Invitational, and the women's golf team is ranked number one in the country according to the Women's Golf Coaches Association National Poll. The ladies won their first tournament of the season by a whopping seven strokes over 11 ranked opponents, and that's pretty darn dominant. Lastly tonight, Gamecock Baseball received two national rankings for their 2021 recruiting class yesterday. According to Perfect Game, South Carolina ranks ninth in the nation for recruiting in 2021, and Collegiate Baseball has them in at 17th. Now, if you're like me and you literally cannot wait for baseball season any longer, well, don't fear because you can head out to Founders Park on Friday at 3.45 p.m. and Saturday just before the Gamecocks take on Troy at 3.30 at 11.15 to watch the game. Gamecocks scrimmage. Now that's all I have for you guys in sports. Back to you, Finn and Will. Thank you, Kendall. After the break, entertainment anchors Marissa and Justin will give you all the details of all the fun events coming up in Columbia. Stay tuned. 
Welcome back to SGTV Nightly News. I'm Marissa Jure. And I'm Justin Walsh. Let's go ahead and break down what you can look forward to locally this week. If you need a way to unwind from your stress, Carolina Productions is presenting Dogs on Davis next Monday, October 4th. From 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Davis Field, there will be the cutest doggos you can give the best head scratches and belly rubs to. Who could resist, especially on your way to classes? Now, I don't know about you, but Carolina Canines always use my daily dose of serotonin. I'm going to head out to Davis and pet me some dogs. Oh, Because God knows I need it right now, especially with midterms. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I have a class that gets out like right, right before or after that, so I... I'm going straight to Davis Field. They never <laughs> fail to just impress me with this event. I, this is, why aren't they all colleges doing this? It's really necessary. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, well, USC Homecoming is back and kicks off on Monday, October 11th. The theme of this year's event is around the world, destination U of SC, and it will be taking flight very soon. This past week, the list of events were announced with their corresponding dates. Gamecocks can look forward to fan favorites such as kickoff, a night at the fair, and the annual Spurs and Struts competition. If you're interested, Further information about this event, feel free to check out Homecoming Instagram page, U of SC Homecoming, or head on over to their page on Garnet Gate. That sounds super fun. I really want to go to that. No, my, this is my one claim to fame. Last year, my fraternity did Spurs and Struts, and we came in second. Oh. So I'm hoping we can come out with some kind of title this year, but I always love, I loved watching them last year. It was so funny, but all the events of home, Homecoming have been fantastic. No, yeah, absolutely. That's so fun. <laughs> Well, if you're looking to have a rockin' Thursday night, we'll look no further. The Vista After Five concert series continues tomorrow at Tin Roof in Columbia. Head on over to see the Columbia, South Carolina-based rock band Tokyo Joe at 5.30. Tickets are free, so make sure to get there early. I, the concert, I think that's so amazing how the Vista gets to do their little concert series. Absolutely. Because normally those concerts, you have to like pay actual like money to go to those, but these are like free because they're at the... Yeah, I mean, I personally, I haven't heard of Tokyo Joe. I'm curious. I mean, obviously, he's playing here, so maybe I'll have the excuse to go see him. Yeah. But I heard he's some kind of rock style. Yeah, it's like a little, We were talking about like, this before, but that's really up my street, so maybe I'll have to check him out. I love the Vista at night. Who doesn't? Yes. So, Tokyo Joe, you might catch me at your concert. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, the South Carolina State Fair is quickly approaching and has all of Columbia excited. After last year's drive through format, the State Fair is finally returning to an in-person experience but still set with precautions to keep the safety. Enjoy rides, games, entertainment, and just good times overall with your friends and family. The State Fair will kick off on October 13th and will continue up until the 24th. Gamecock Entertainment's Thursday After Dark event will even feature the State Fair on the 14th. See you there. You know, I love when it comes time for the State Fair. That is my favorite thing. I just love to go and like see the whole event, the food. Oh, I just, I love fairs in general. Honestly. I mean, the state, uh, my first time getting to go to the State Fair was my freshman year and last year we get to do, I mean, I didn't personally go to the drive through format, but my one favorite story is like me and my now best friend, we hung out for the first time at the State Fair my freshman year and I had such a good time. I cannot wait to go back. I'm a sucker for rides and stuff like that. Especially wasting my money on pointless games. Oh, I'm absolutely. there. You can absolutely. definitely catch me there. <laughs> absolutely. Well, coming after the break, meteorologist Bryce Glenn will let you know what to expect for this week's forecast, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to your Wednesday night forecast. I'm meteorologist Bryce Glenn, and to start off, we have our weather headlines. First up, we're going to have a cool and clear night tonight, but tomorrow is going to be nice and sunny and warm, pretty consistent with this week's temperatures. And we're going to have some early fog on Friday and Saturday. And with that, we're going to have a little bit higher humidity on Saturday to start off our game day. We're going to have showers throughout the week, however, starting Monday. And with those showers, some cooler temperatures. However, tomorrow, it's going to be a warm one in South Carolina. We're going to be in the mid 80s up in the upstate. Move down to the Midlands will be around 90 uh, across the Midlands. 88 in Florence, 80, 90 in Sumter, as well in Columbia. And we're going to be at 88 in Orangeburg and Aiken, a little bit cooler along the coast in the low 80s in Myrtle Beach, high 80s in Charleston, and mid 80s in Hilton Head. As of right now in Columbia, it is only 83 degrees. Feels like 84. We have a slight breeze from the east at 2 miles per hour. Fairly dry out there with a humidity of 49%. Mostly clear, maybe a few clouds floating around. Our local time is 7.23 p.m. and our sunset at 7.10. Now, here's our forecast for the week tomorrow. Near 90 and very sunny, same idea Friday, early fog, same idea Saturday, early fog, 87. Sunday, those showers are going to show up, uh, it's going to be 88, temperature is going to drop a little bit more on Monday, 
and we're gonna have some more showers on Tuesday at 81. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with this week's edition of Carolina Canines. And finally, tonight's edition of Carolina Canines features Tess sent in by sophomore Jaggy Editor. Tess is an 11-year-old German Shepherd Collie mix. She loves cheese, going on hikes, and meeting new people. And she can open a door with her nose. Tess, oh my goodness. Tess, more like talented. I mean, come on. That's Tess awesome. Is, Tess is so cute and playing in the snow from Charleston. I, I don't get a lot of snow. It's so cute. So cute. And on that one year, a few years back where we did get snow, I took my dog Toby. Shout out Toby if you're watching. I love you very much. We went out and uh, we just like went out and we took him in our golf cart. And we just like were sledding throughout the neighborhood and it was just such a fun time, but it looks like Tess was having an equally fun time. Oh yeah, Tess uh, was having a blast. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And that picture, that picture is just amazing. Yeah. I love it so much. Well, that's all we have for tonight's edition of SGTV Nightly News. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. To keep up with all of our content, be sure to visit us online at sgtvonline.com. And one more thing, be sure to subscribe to our brand new news brief, SGTV Recap. We will be sending you a recap of all the week's news from SGTV every Monday morning for SGTV Nightly News. I'm Mark And I'm Finn Carlin. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, Carolina, forever to be.